and rock him gently to sleep because he's a beautiful little baby. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's start the round of applause for Patrick Hall Mental illness. Uh, that's the sound of uh, everybody in the room's sphincters tightening, but not to worry. Uh, the very fact that you're here means that you have a kind of a fondness for mental illness, and maybe even a bit for self, because amateur <laughs> comedy is really just a very, very acceptable form of self harm. Um, <laughs> I suffer from crippling anxiety, chronic depression, and oh, that's funny, uh, chronic depression, and uh, bipolar type 2, which is the kind where you can't have sweets or candy. Um, people, don't like, <laughs> people don't like talking about mental illness in this country because it doesn't gel with our um, national narrative and our ideas of masculinity, but I can guarantee you there was a depressive in the trenches at Gallipoli. You know, you had the 15-year-old kid on his rosary beads praying for dear life. You had the guy riddled with clap from an Egyptian brothel. Then you had the protagonist of Peter Weir's 1981 classic Gallipoli of the same name. <laughs> Why your legs? Steel springs! How fast are you gonna run? As fast as a weapon! And then in the corner, just kind of like, leaning, half asleep, is a depressive, and he was conscripted. <laughs> what are your legs? I mean, uh, well, uh, the kind of, I get the, the legs, I guess, the legs. <laughs> How fast are you gonna run? Well, uh, I'm probably not gonna. I'm probably not gonna do any running, but I'll, <laughs> I'll walk at a brisk pace. <laughs> that's all right. So we're, we're part of the story. Um, my biggest problem with depression, besides how shit it is, is uh, the name itself, because people don't understand it. They hear depression and they think sadness, which isn't what it is. It's really an overwhelming, existential, crushing feeling that makes it very difficult to do banal things like uh, getting dressed, getting out of bed, amateur comedy, that kind of stuff. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Normal people love going to JB Hi-Fi. A normal will get up, they'll head on down to the old JB's, and they'll head to the discount laser disc bin, and they'll pick up the director's extended cut, bunghole, Anna Kendrick edition of Pitch Perfect 2, and they'll be happy, and they'll take it home, and they'll watch it, and they'll love it. I go to JB Hi-Fi, and I go to the laser disc bin, and I pick up bunghole edition of Pitch Perfect 2. And I just stand there and I make this noise. <laughs> For about three to five hours. Um, that's the depressive brain. We have trouble grasping normal things like why you want to watch a film about competitive a cappella teams. <laughs> it's really beyond our scope. Uh, going to JB Hi-Fi, Borogoon, most part places kind of give me the same feeling of going to the Holocaust Memorial. Um, but of course without any of the historical significance or resonance, just a <laughs> deep emptiness. Uh, a lot of people wonder about where anxiety, bipolar, depression begin and end. Uh, the three amigos with Mark Short. Uh, well your average night kind of starts out like this, you have anxiety and he's pacing back and forth. He's like, I got 45 minutes, 45 minutes to get to this film, that's five minutes to get dressed, five minutes to have a shower, ten minutes to drive down there, five minutes to park, five minutes to get in line. Ah, oh, motherfucker, what if they have one of those choose where you sit in computer ticketing machines? I can't handle that in 45 minutes. Ah, oh, that's like an hour and a half decision. 45 fucking minutes! 45 minutes? Who cares about 45 minutes when in 45 years you'll be dead? Oh, depression, you motherfucker, get out of here. I can't handle this shit right now. I'm just saying, man, 45 minutes, 45 years, you, everybody you know and love, and everything you understand will be fundamentally different, so what's the point of doing anything? Here's my recommendation. Uh, we crawl into bed, and we get our Tim Tam pods, and we let them melt on our chest as we uh, go into a semi coma for 28 to 36 hours. You son of a bridge, depression. If you're oh my god, I'm gonna get him out of here, I'll get him out of here. All right, man, don't get him out of here. We'll just sleep for 10 hours. You motherfucker, I'm getting him out. Enter. Bipolar upswing. Now this guy is like Pete Korea 1979 Mork and Mindy Coke fueled Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of comes out. <laughs> hey fellas, what the hell's going on? I was on eBay for four and a half hours last night. I bought 300 iPod nano shuffles. I can upload them with all my favorite songs and send them out to everybody on the LinkedIn account. If that doesn't give me a job, I have no idea what will. You know what else I did? I watched every episode of Mad Men in two days. Haven't seen them before. You know what I realized? The theme song doesn't have lyrics. Big oversight, I wrote it for him. <laughs> 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 
then they get sad when those ads turn out bad. <laughs> and I put that on a USB, I put that on an envelope, and I send it to John Hamm and Matthew Weiner just in time for the Emmys. What are we doing tonight? Well, Anxiety over here wants to see a movie. A movie? Hell no! I said we get all the alcohol and all the prescription medicine in the house, we mix it together in a big bowl, we rub it around our gums, and then maybe up our asshole and see what happens. <laughs> you know, that sounds pretty good if we end up blacking out for 15 hours. <laughs> you sons of bitches! You've ruined my night for the last motherfucking time. I've been looking forward to this film for six months. If I miss Pitch Perfect 2 even five minutes on it, I'm gonna kill myself. You're gonna kill yourself? Hell! Well, do it! <laughs> yeah, man, do it! Anyway, that's the fun of having mental illness. <laughs> if you have mental illness, I recommend a career in writing or comedy, because even if you fail, you feel nothing. Thank you very much! <laughs>